the number one goal when shooting these videos is let's have fun. Let's make something that's cool and let's collaborate in a way where you're able to express yourself and I'm giving you the idea and you're inspired by it, but you get the freedom to be able to do what you want to do and so you get to run away with it and have fun and we'll capture that. How you doing? I'm good. <laughs> So I cast them, I shoot them. Uh, I use a company or several of them that will uh, send out a casting breakdown, which is a description of the video, or to the best of what I have in mind, because we're always going to come up with things, you know, uh, be in the mode of, you know, uh, receiving whatever inspiration is there together. Uh, but I, you know, put out a thing and then uh, they're agent or their manager or they themselves will get in touch with me. So sometimes it's 500 people or it's a thousand people or whatever it is. So maybe I'm trying to narrow it down by including some language that is a little more my kind of thing, a little more talk about vibration, talk about this or that spiritual thing so that I will find people who are maybe a little bit more on that wavelength in advance so that what we're trying to do is we're trying to make something that's fucking fun and where we can just come up with it together and where they're feeling like they're part of the creative process and not that they're just being told what to do and directed and so on and so forth, that kind of thing. And it's not this big fucking crew of these people who everybody is, you know, standing around not knowing what the fuck they're doing for a few hours before they shoot anything. We're just going to have some fun and we're going to shoot something that's cool. And so, you know, once I know that you're really comfortable and you want to get together and you want to shoot the thing, then we're going to get together and we're going to have fun and, and that's it. And we're going to shoot that one day and then, you know, and so uh, it's that. It's, it's, it's me being able to make something more personal to what the music is, uh, you know, rather than letting somebody else shoot the video, another director shoot the video for, for the music. And also not having it be the landscape or the, the flowers kind of thing that is so often the case. I like to have people in the video because to me, ambient music and this whole thing, this is about people. This is, you know, music is about people. So I've always had that kind of attitude from, from the beginning of it is that it's, it's a, a people kind of a thing, you know, um, rather than what you always associate amb ambient music with, which is always like stars and nebulae and this bullshit kind of thing. It's just so overdone. I like to have people. Uh, one of the things I like to do of late uh, with some of the videos, not all of them, is to shoot a YouTube version, if you will, and then a Vimeo version. So you have something where you can have an uncensored version. Because I think that it's one of the things that's sort of lacking with music videos is that uh, if you've gotten to the point where your video is showing quite a bit but you're limiting how much you're showing because you know that you want your video to go on YouTube and Apple and Tidal and these different video outlets and then you're cutting it short from being able to actually show something where oh dear lord we've gone and we've we've crossed the line and there's there's real skin uh oh you have a real nipple in the video um that has to be cut out so that becomes kind of silly to me, and the idea is that if you have a different version of the video, then you use the alternate footage that includes that. So then you have two different versions of the video. You have a YouTube version, you have a Vimeo version, and so everybody's happy. And I think it's a kind of a fun way to shoot music videos, uh, because I think the photography, uh, when you're into it, you're going to have nude photography. It's not abnormal or weird. But the concept of it being slightly weird with music videos is a, is a more of a kind of a, an invention of the limitations of what you're working with as far as what your uh, distributor is. If, if it was MTV, there was always the limitation and everybody always wanted to push it as far as they could. And then with YouTube, people want to push it. And then oftentimes people will shoot things that will be explicit but then they don't have the uh, alternate version there, so then you're not able to see the video unless you see the uh, uncut version of it. Um, so I just kind of think, you know, it's not new. People have done it for a long time. I remember when there were VHS tapes of uh, Tupac or, or Snoop Dogg or, or 
fucking digital underground or something like that probably from uh, years ago where they would have uh, an alternate uncut version of the video and I always thought that was kind of cool. So it's copying that a little bit and it's uh, it's also just having the ability to explore it in a different kind of a way where maybe the video crosses into a territory that's now we're not sure where we are. We're making something that feels different because when you've taken the image beyond what might have been acceptable before for a music video and now you've crossed over into a place where you don't know what it is that you're doing, you're modeling but you're not shooting photos like you would be, uh, I think it's a kind of a cool thing that music videos should be allowed to express that way and they often don't and unless they have a more explicit version which I feel like sometimes it's almost as if the people who end up doing the more explicit versions try to do something seemingly as vulgar as possible or as as if they're trying to do something offensive or as if they're trying to do something daring rather than just that it's the natural evolution of the video itself when you have another uh, element in it where now you are saying that yes you can the person can be nude in this video and we're, n we're not we're not upsetting anybody because this isn't going to be on YouTube uh, I think it should be something that people feel more like they can do I wish more artists would do that so that it wasn't to me it's cartoony how many uh, YouTube videos come absolutely right close to the line of having nudity in them but then don't it's almost cartoony to me that that's the insistence that it can't be more than that. And yet, it's like, well, you've you've basically fucking shown nudity, so what what is it that you think that you're not showing here? Other than the suggestion then that there's something wrong with showing something more. So then there's this kind of attitude where sometimes people will think that, oh, well, you know, music videos are kind of like porn these days, and, you know, they kind of, you know, well, it's like, Music is sexy, and people uh, dance when they listen to music, and they hook up, and there is always going to be that correlation of those two things there, sex and music, or eroticism and music, or what, what have you. Those two things are right there with each other. They're, they've been friends forever. And yet, um, somehow, if you suggest that it would be porn just because it's nude, it's like, what do you think a nude photograph is? Like, what? I, I mean, I'm speaking as far as Americans are concerned because it's it's one of the stupidest things in the world, the way in which uh, we are just so overly censorship-ridden with, with the way that we think of things. So uh, these music videos are kind of a way to have something be a little bit different, a little bit, you know... I don't care whether someone says it is or isn't ta tasteful, and I don't care whether someone says it's pornography or whatever they're going to say about it but the idea is that um, it gives you a, an alternative to the idea of not being able to see the thing because oh no god forbid we show a nipple <laughs> yeah okay got it this is probably the most frequent thing that people are asking about related to things that i post online in different places uh where I'm talking about things that are spiritual, or maybe at the outset, uh, if you read some interview and there was something that was sort of spiritual where I talked about vibration, or I talked about this or that, you know, or about being a conduit or whatever it was, and where there's something spiritual and I'm talking about, you know, peace and I'm talking about meditation and I'm talking about this or that kind of thing that maybe you're wanting to know about that. I get a lot of messages about that, probably more than anything else. Um, so try to answer that in some kind of way which is to just give you some fucked up stuff as far as this is what I am like or this is what I believe or this is what I'm into it started with uh, with maybe just being aware that I was a conduit and having that kind of energy exchange oftentimes very synchronistic experiences with the sensation that okay this person uh, is an energy that has has passed and um, I'm feeling them now. They're here now. 
and it's energy obviously it's a consciousness but I'm feeling it and I understand it and I'm getting something and I'm getting some kind of a message so that was going on for a really really long time and uh, then I wanted to know more I wanted to understand things at a deeper level because I had a lot of things that I was conflicted about like there's fucked up things that are going on in the world and I don't understand whether I should be maybe doing something more about them as opposed to just making music and uh, September 2014 it really really kind of hit me completely where I had sort of uh, hit a point with that struggle to try to understand whether I should be doing something more. I don't you know I don't know what it would have been I'm gonna make a documentary about this particular thing that's going on in the world that I think that uh, I could be helpful to inform someone about that is serious shit whatever and I'm freaked out about it and I need to you know, do something versus I'm just gonna do my own thing, which is what I do. I'm gonna make music. That's that's enough. Uh, so there was that great asking within of trying to understand what should I do? What what's my thing to do? You know, I want to know. I want I want a clear answer. And uh, and I really really got myself in a knot over it. And I really had ulcers and was a mess. And and it took finally coming to a place of total surrender. And, um, you know, I, I, I was into numerological stuff and had, you know, the angel number thing and had so much connectivity with different things. So I was seeing it left and right and I was getting that feeling of, okay, I'm seeing, you know, 444 or four fours and everywhere all the time. So it's like, okay, the angels are telling me all is well and, what, and so I need to pray and I need to, to really tap into this, this source energy thing and, and really get to a place where I can fucking hear what the hell it's trying to tell me instead of just being a kind of, oh wow, look at that again. Oh wow, more synchronous. all right, this is fucking ridiculous. I just, okay, all right, what are you trying to say? But I was in a struggle with it. And uh, so September 2014, I was like the sixth. Something woke me up. The night before, I think I had really absolutely come to a real point of surrender and a real I asked you, and now you have to give me an answer. And so this energy woke me up at five in the morning. And I didn't open my eyes because it was too intense and too strange to me. I didn't want to see it. But I felt it that it was like a fucking train of this super powerful, loving, blissful, just right, just perfect energy just came paving over just just totally obliterated all the worry and the fear and the doubt that I had just just ran it over completely and I and I was just like not overwhelmed by it that I remember specifically I always r remind myself of that that there was not overwhelmment because overwhelmment would be somehow negative it was still just right it was way beyond powerful but it was still just right there was nothing negative in it whatsoever and um, with it came an intuitive knowing and the first part of it was the words feel good and that they were specific words not like a voice was saying them it was just a kind of a intuitive knowing a kind of download to my consciousness and with that was a kind of an understanding of what that meant that feeling good was the natural state of the planet or what you had access to obviously there's still shit that's going on and there's there's animals eating each other and there's people killing each other. But the natural state, just like air that we breathe, has the potential, if you tap into it, to feel like that felt, to feel that bliss. That if you paved away all the worry and the fear and the doubt, if you got rid of all of those obstacles, that feeling is available all of the time. That feeling is trying to wrap its arms around you and trying to, to uh, get close to you and be, be with you and let you know that everything is okay. And so it was my answer. What do I do? I feel good. There was an understanding that was with that. It was very, I mean, this all came in, in instantaneously. It's hard to explain. It was really downloaded to my brain, which sounds insane, but, but I was not on any drugs and I'm not on any drugs now. And I, I, was, I knew what was going on. I didn't hallucinate it. It was real. And um, the feeling that that was there with it, or the, the furthering of the understanding was the idea that feel good and, you'll, and, and that will tell you what to do. And 
So you don't want to go make that documentary. You don't want to go get involved in that kind of thing because when you try to do it, you don't feel good. You get wound up and crazy over it. But when you do your music, you feel good. And that's proved itself to me in really cool ways that if I had mainly wanted to help people and that that was where my struggle was, I mean, the amount of people who message me and say, you know, this music, I heard this, and it's really peaceful, and it's really relaxing, and it's really blissful, and I was going through a really, really rough time, and I found your music, and it was magical the way that I found it, and now I have something that I can relax to, and you don't understand, like, what that did, how that saved me. That kind of gave me my answer. I mean, that's the furthering of that, that it has value. Everything, I mean, I believe everything fucking has value. Every little fucking thing has, a, has meaning and purpose and is so important. But that's validation in some kind of a way. Uh, even though it's, you know, still me talking. Oh, you yeah, know, my music is important. Who gives a shit, right? I don't even consider it my music. It's from somewhere else. Who the fuck knows? So that's um, that part of it. And then the new part of it, where I'm even crazier, is that this happened in the last month. I mean, it happened a month ago, approximately, a little, maybe a little bit more than that, was a furthering of that kind of struggle with how do I be more in tune with that energy? Because I've spent years uh, exploring and discovering and getting around that and understanding and feeling for that feel good and following it everywhere and seeing it lead me to places where I'd shoot this music video with this particular person who I knew I should work with because it felt good and it felt cool to, to just felt right. There was a, there was a, a, a lining up of energy, a, 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 a shared wavelength there. And now we're friends after we've done the thing. And so it's amazing, you know, that when you follow that, it leads to great things. And it's somebody who is very, very spiritual. And, you know, I mean, now it's as if that's all that's in my life is people who are on that wavelength. And I've found people who say the same things, know the same things that I know, uh, know the same teachers or teachings, and, and, and it's just kind of ridiculous. But there was still a little bit of a sense of a struggle some, at some points of wanting to have more of a... I mean, I have my emotional... Uh, guidance system. I have my 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 moment-to-moment -moment guidance of letting me know does this feel good or does this not feel good. But good. there was a wanting to, uh, let's say, be in that frequency more profoundly as much as possible. Be in that alignment in a more full way. Experience it so that I could look at any given situation and feel love for that thing that I'm looking at or that any person I could think of, I could love that person, and that nothing would, would be causing me to have that separation. That here's, here's this inner part of me, this eternal part of me, this soul me, that's at this high, high frequency, that source frequency, and here's me, and I want to be here. And not just to have that visit me like it did in 2014, but I want to be there. And I invited that through a rough ride because I got really sick by not being able to mentally figure out how to get there. And of course, very stupidly, not allowing and, 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 and meditating and finding relief to get me there, I became struggle-oriented in my, in my thought process at a certain point and got in that knot again. So I got really sick and I couldn't eat for a little over a week and I was fucking starving and crazy, but felt so euphoric in this strange Zen energy that's indescribable that must be something that I, I mean, now I have come to see that other people have said this about not eating. So, so I can no longer look at the idea of someone starving in the same kind of way because if there's the potential that a person could be feeling that, it is like feeling that you're so going to be okay and it's all right and there's this energy is around you even though you are getting close to death. So, not exactly something that everybody would want to have that experience necessarily. That's a little insane, and I don't recommend starving yourself or fasting, if you will, to get there. But I think that's why people do fast. Now I understand. Uh, and I think I understand what that feeling 
uh, that you would be, why you would chase a feeling like that, what you would be looking for, because it's a strong connection. So, at a certain point, the, the simplest way to say it is, that energy that I experienced in 2014 came into my fucking body. <laughs> That's what happened. That was, that was the breaking point. I finally, uh, it broke me. The, the, the not eating broke me. And I let that energy come in. And there were points early on where I was like struggling to maintain it, to contain it in my body. And I felt the energy shooting off in different directions and I would get unbelievably cranky. And then I would allow it back in and I would be like, holy shit, I can't believe it. It's like somebody just gave me five hits of acid and five hits of ecstasy and I can't believe how fucking good I feel. This is insane. And I've gotten used to that and I've gotten to be able to be more, uh, I can talk now and, I, and I'm not at the place that I was at in 2014 where my teeth were chattering after that experience or in this experience where I was, I can't even describe when it was first happening, uh, how just outrageously, I mean, if you can imagine a person who just, just got hit with like uh, electricity from God, basically. I don't know what the fuck else you think of, you know, um, what, what you call that. But it was the total coming together, me with me. I feel, I felt, and I feel fuller. It's like, it's not an out-of-body experience. It's a, I've never fucking been more in my body than, than now experience. That's what it is. It's, it's ridiculous. And there are times constantly where I keep looking in the mirror and saying, this is fucking ridiculous. It's, it's, I feel too good. It's insane. And, uh, it's been, you know, a month of this, so it's not going anywhere. It doesn't quit. <laughs> it takes some, um, allowing and some, there's points in the day where it's not a hundred percent. And I'm sure if I put up a fight with myself and put in a really good effort, uh, I could get myself twisted out of it. But over the years, my beliefs have shifted so much that I don't believe in things that I used to believe in that would cause me to dip out of feeling good to that extent anymore. And so this really, really full alignment that I want to call it, this, this coming into total whatever the fuck it is, uh, that's sort of like the goal. I feel like, because basically it's kind of a godlike, invincible feeling and you can't have any kind of sense of fear about anything and you don't have any sense of impatience about things that you want coming to you and you just sort of feel like everything that you can think about, you can find uh, pleasure in the thought itself. So uh, that's new and it's kind of interesting as well because Maybe that had to happen first so that I would be able to give the best possible answer uh, as it relates to this stuff because otherwise it would have been only explaining the 2014 experience and not knowing about this, which is, I don't even know what the fuck you call this. I keep saying alignment, it's using somebody else's term, but I don't, it's that. I don't know what it is. It's pretty crazy. So, uh, to wrap things up, um, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, there's bad stuff going on, sure. But it's not as real as it seems. Don't freak out. The loving energy is available to you at all times. You just got to chill out. Just give it a minute. You know when you're arguing with somebody and then as soon as you stop, all of a sudden some amount of time goes by and you laugh it off and you say, I don't even know what the fuck I was mad about. And then you can talk to them again and everything's okay. You can do that in much bigger ways and really avoid the obstacles and the pitfalls of things that are going on. And then if you want to invite things and invite energy into your reality that has some rough ride kind of element to it in order to then get answers and 
get further understanding of things, then you're more in a position to know that you're the one who's creating that. Hopefully, that's the best thing that you can take away from what I'm saying is you're creating everything. And good or bad, you're creating it by way of where you're vibrating, how you're feeling. And so, if you're wanting to like everything in your reality more, feel good. Trust that that's enough in itself. Trust that the aligned energy will provide answers to questions that you want to know and perceptions of things that are to your advantage and perspective that is allowing of intuitive knowing in a given moment as to what to do, not just plans and maps to follow and the blueprints of life, but an actual moment to moment. What do I do? I know. What do I do? I feel good now. It comes to me. I receive the idea. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I want to be inspired with everything that I do. Going to the grocery store should be a full-blown creative experience. Everything should be like that. Everything should be fun. It can be. It's, it's unnecessary to struggle and it's unnecessary to kick your own ass all the time. So yield to that energetic hug that's available to you and uh, it's pretty fucking awesome. That's, uh, that's giving a little too much advice. I hate to be one to give advice, but since that comes with a lot of the question with people when they start to ask me, that's my advice, is yield to it. Allow it. It's not bad. It's uh, ancient. It's been here with us forever. It's been on the planet forever. Look at the animals. The animals are in tune way the fuck more than people are. That's why they're just dancing and they're galloping through life and everything is good. And they're not experiencing the anguish that humans... They're getting chewed on and they're doing crazy shit to each other. And yes, some of them, there are some animals that grieve and there's animals that mourn in certain ways. And there's, there's all kinds of things that are going on that are bad. Surely. Surely you can call certain things bad. But there is an energetic dance and a knowing that we are infinite. We are energy. We're energy consciousness that every idea that we have and every experience that we have is expanding the universe and it's going to keep going and it's going to keep getting better and the capacity to feel love is going to grow and grow and grow. And so Earth is here for us as a place to explore, to be able to, to make the universe in the energy form more that then gives us more to play with as we come into experiences here again and again if we want to if we choose everything is choice the responsibility is just you to you just look in the mirror that's your worst enemy and that's your best friend <laughs> there's nobody else who's fucking with your shit you're attracting everything you're not having somebody exert their dominance over you in terms of what you're feeling so Shut the fuck up. All right, see you later.